Hey, thanks so much for being here tonight. I have two wonderful guests with me tonight. I have Robin from Robin Gardens, located Hi. in Chicago. And we have Steve from Digwell Greenfingers That's it. in the UK. <laughs> so we thought as we were going to talk about garden pests, it'd be really good to have some U.S. info and some U.K. info, because although they might be similar, uh, they're not always the same. So let me just say hi to a few folks that I see here uh, already in the chat. Hi, Jace. Hi, Mark and Mel and Joe and the allotted chef. Oh, and there's Steve from Digwell Greenfingers. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Pauline and Anna, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I think we have a lot to talk about, and yet, even as we were talking, it comes down to maybe a couple things that we uh, have figured out kind of apply to all bugs. But I thought we would start off tonight, and if you have specific problems with certain bugs, or pests, I guess we'll call them, uh, just put it in the chat, and we will sure try to address it if that's not one of the insects we have down for tonight. So I thought we would start off with pigeons. <laughs> I believe that was high on Steve's list. They're not called pigeons here. They're called flying rats. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> See, we call squirrels rats with puffy uh, tails. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. So what is your uh, biggest issue with pigeons? Steve? They're my biggest, they are my biggest pest on my allotment. Um, they just don't care. They're, they are immune to any form of get off my plot you know whatever you do uh, you put scaredy eyes up i have that big revolving thing with a red and a yellow eye yeah i just look at it and go <laughs> and then carry on pecking away at everything you know uh, so, so none of those uh kind of distraction things work no no none of the actual um physical deterrents seem to work for me or well, any of us up there the problem we've got is we're on a massive open field that's been converted to 39 allotment plots and it's open um and so the bigger birds tend to dominate the smaller birds there are no small birds there are no finches and that sort of thing i've never seen a sparrow up there okay. or a robin huh? never seen a robin up there because in the sky all the time there's the big birds there's a buzzard or a red kite but the pigeons don't care about them they just carry on regardless. Yeah, come and get me if you can. You know, <laughs> yeah. So you don't find that netting helps? Netting does help, but I don't okay. want to net everything because it just looks so... Yeah. I know. Yeah, I want to see the vegetables. I know. Yeah. And so they'll attack anything that you're growing pretty much? Yes, but, um, mainly brassicas. And so I do net them when they're young. Now, I use a product called... Oh, look at this. <laughs> Handy. This is the wrong one. This is the wrong one. This is, oh, no, it's the right one. Sorry, uh, pigeons. And what okay. you do with this, you spray your crops with it, and it tastes awful. The pigeon has a quick bite. They go, oh, my God, I'm going somewhere else. So they go to my neighbor's plot. They go to Hades plot, you know, okay. <laughs> or something. And it tastes awful. It's very, very high calcium, but not calcium that feeds a plant. It just calcium stays on the leaf. Okay. But the trouble is it works on adult plants. If a pigeon eats a seedling, the seedling's gone. So right. it's not, not too good on seedlings, really. So you've got to net them till they've got, I don't know, six or seven true leaves or whatever. Until right. then, you know, they're quite big. Yeah. And it does work. It does work. Um, I'll mention them again. I'll mention grazers again later on. I did a yeah. quick Google, and they don't seem to sell it in uh, North America. Um, I don't have never... pigeon problems. No, yeah. it's, it's good. It's good. I yeah. prefer it because it's natural. It doesn't kill anything. And pit, I have no qualms about killing a pest as long as the pest isn't native to the UK. So a pigeon's native. You know, um, uh, leaf miners, for example, I don't mind killing them because they've come from abroad. They can, they can go back home for I care. You know what I mean? And the sooner we get rid of them, the better. But <laughs> Yeah. No, I do remember a lot when I I have visited the UK many times, and I remember pigeons were everywhere. They're stupid. Like you're in a big city. Yeah. Like, they're just everywhere. Yeah. 
so you don't really have much trouble with them, Robin? I don't have any problem with pigeons. I have problems with birds. Um, but uh, they don't go for like the leafy greens like they do um, in the UK. They go for my berries. Yeah. So and they you know, know the, the day they're ready. You know, you're <laughs> waiting till tomorrow. And they're in there first thing in the morning before you're up. And it's gone. So yeah. I have to I have to net my blackberries. We made a PVC cage to hold the netting over the blackberries, and um, I net my two cherry trees. And I have a I have a cage with netting uh, for the blueberries and strawberries. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we we wouldn't eat any. They'd have them all. It's so funny too on the cherry tree. They'll leave the stem in the little pit and just. <clears throat> Eat everything no, that's around very it. Very specific, isn't it? it like at just... least clean up your mess when you're done, <laughs> <That's> right? <just> <laughs> wow. But the other, the other thing I do on the BlackBerry cage is I've used reflective streamers um, that blow in the wind, and then um, I'll save old CDs, and I'll I'll put them with a uh, fish line and hang them. Yeah, and that, that. that helps too and because yeah. I don't want them flying into my net either. So this helps um you know. Let them know. Yeah. There's something here. <laughs> do you do you find any one type of music works better? I find reggae <laughs> keeps them away, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's, <laughs> that's good. That's good. So yeah, be careful what kind of CD you put out there. Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, birds here are. I I find them more that they're they're after the fruit. Yeah, definitely. Thankfully, they've never. I've never had a bird peck out of green. Uh, well, I'll send yeah. you some. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're near a uh, lot of restaurants, like uh, on the big the big uh, avenue that's just <clears throat> behind us, and I do see pigeons occasionally because I think they like to go and get by the dumpsters where they're. Throwing out a, excuse me, free food, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and so they occasionally yeah. hop on our garage, and they're a big bird. They well, they're, they're, well, they're they're just stupid as well because if you, if there's a couple on the road, they won't move until you're five feet from them. You know, yeah. you think, oh, oh no, I've run him over. Oh no, here he goes, he's gone. You know, yeah. Now, Layton, what is late? Late on the comments called... there. Le sorry, sorry. late made a comment. But the, uh, the town pigeons, feral pigeons, are different to wood pigeons. Um, feral pigeons, they'll just land on people's arms and eat the fish and chips out of their fingers, if you know what I mean. They're, well, I think those were yeah. some of the ones we ran into in London because they were yeah. happy to just go, yeah. excuse me, did you get that for me? Thank you. Yeah, well, they're, they're yeah. humanized, aren't they? they they're they're yeah. used to humans, you know, so, yeah. Well, and one of the things I did read was don't feed them, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Like okay, so I'm trying to get you out of my garden, <laughs> but I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna serve you yeah. snacks yeah, while yeah, you're yeah. here. Yeah, Crazy. I thought that was a very funny one. <laughs> okay, so next up on our hit list is slugs, <laughs> and I don't think <laughs> I need to show many people pictures of slugs, but I did <laughs> I did take a, I did get a few. Let me see if I can. Pull these up. Where are my slug pictures? <laughs> Mel, I agree. We get we get seagulls oh, I don't here. Have not, a slug picture. Not in the garden, but close. I think it was because I thought you don't need to see a slug picture. We all know what they look like. Um, so is that a problem for you, Steve? Yes and no. Because again, I use the grazers products. But okay. only when only when the plants are a little bit older, those slugs don't need a lot of the grazers to stop eating. So the, you can get away with smaller seedlings if you like. Okay. <clears throat> but um, I've stopped using the nematodes. I was using nematodes for quite a few years. Those little tiny little worms that get into a they get into a slug's air hole and they eat from the inside out and lay their eggs mm. and that. The trouble is they are indiscriminate. They kill all slugs. And only um, there's there's forty odd varieties of slug in the UK, 
and only eight eat live vegetation, eight or nine, I think it is. And so by putting the nematodes down, any beneficial slugs in the soil, they're killed as well. Leopard mm -hmm. slugs, you know, the leopard slugs get eaten. Leopard slugs are cannibalistic. They will eat other slugs. Um, I can't remember which one it is now. I think it's called the black slug. I can't remember. Don't quote me on this. But it eats some um, decaying matter. So it helps with the rotting down in the soil and that sort of thing. Right. And by killing them, you're just slowing down the uh, the soil nature sort of thing. So I've, I've sort of stopped using them. Now, with this grazers, does it have to be reapplied after every yes. rain? Yeah, every, every, every okay. time it rains, really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you get a lot of rain. So oh, don't tell me. <laughs> that a, well, you keep course, applying that a whole lot. And slugs like the damp. So, yeah, it's a losing Yeah, battle. no, they yeah, love yeah, the damp. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of products. There's um, there's one called Strolch, and it's a very very coarsely chopped up straw, little sharp little pieces, and it's it's been um, mineralized with um, some sort of iron, and the slugs don't like crawling over it. Okay. They don't like crawling over it unless they're very hungry, and if they're very hungry, they'll crawl over anything. They'll go over eggshells, they'll go over sand and all stuff like that. You know, they they'll. If, a, if now, an animal's hungry enough, it will do whatever it needs to survive. Right. So, um, now, have you found the copper? Uh, isn't it copper tape that they don't like to? Yeah, I've, I've not. I've not used it. With their I, I, or I did it once. I did it once on a, a raised bed made out of an old pallet collar. <laughs> but my own fault. The pallet collar is like that. But the plant. Oh, wrong way. Wrong way. Went over. Where are we? <laughs> I <laughs> went know. Over the top. I, I know the plant went over the top, and so it touched the grass on the outside, and, and all the slugs climbed over the plant <laughs> and ate it anyway. So um, yeah, that's my fault. That was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Robin, do you do you, do you struggle with slugs? Uh, thankfully, they are not a big pest in the garden, but occasionally I'll get them. And if I'm, if we get I'm really rainy, come and move where you are, Robin. I'm going to come and move where you are. <laughs> <laughs> they if they get really rainy, then they'll we'll get more, and they're just not as big as the ones I see in the oh. UK. They're much tinier. But yeah. but when I have a problem, I use uh, beer traps. I take a a yogurt mm. cup and I embed it in the earth right at um le uh, level and right. put about an inch or so of beer in the bottom and then i'll put another yogurt bigger on top and cut a few doorways yeah. and then they just okay. crawl right in and, <clears throat> and drowned they love that Sounds beer like almost a barbie house that you make <laughs> it yeah. is but i i mean i probably have had to do that maybe twice in 20 years yeah, it's, I've had no problems with slugs. It's good to put a lid on it because it stops the cats from drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's that's probably... one product, another product that's just been released, I think it's just been released in the UK, that I saw the other day at the Garden Press event. It's called Slug Stopper. And what I like about it is the, is the, the trigger is thumb-operated, not finger-operated. But the way it works, it's full of little tiny sharp things, a bit like um, di diatomaceous earth, uh -huh. really mm -hmm. sharp. And the slugs go up the leaves and they think, this is a bit rough for me. And they turn around and go back down again. I've not tried it yet. I've got a bottle coming. So we'll, we'll ah, see that. Okay. that I'll try that on some of my um, less precious crop, shall we say, to start off with, see if it works. And then, uh, yeah. 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 Huh. Yeah, I have found one slug in my garden and it was a leopard slug and it was about six inches long okay exaggeration it was a good <laughs> it was a good three and a half inches long uh and it was kind of a frightening looking thing but that's so i think maybe he's doing his job and he's just eating all the bad ones yeah because i don't get them uh but i do hear that keeping your garden like free of debris yes free of rotted leaves uh when something's not doing your plant any good just cut it off and yeah, that's what it is give it airflow so it's a lot about airflow isn't it though too I, I left a few um pieces of wood lying down over the winter and i come to tidy up and the slugs were all lying underneath it they'd got into the the cracks in the plank and all sorts you know and uh yeah so it's a good way to trap them actually just lay something down and um, you can trap them and just dispose of them at your, you know, how, how you at want your them. leisure. Yeah. yeah. Rhubarb leaves are good for it. 
because rhubarb leaves are so big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you cut them off because they're poisonous to us, they're not poisonous to slugs, but just lay them on the ground. Nice little bit of shade overnight. They all get underneath it. Next day, you've got 25 slugs, you know. Oh, wow. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. That's a good tip right there. Okay. Anybody else? Do I see anybody else talking about slugs? Oh, I'm so far behind in the chat. Know, there's a lot of comments. <laughs> I know it's yeah. it's a nemesis, I think, for a lot of people yeah. in rainier climates. I think we get too hot. I don't think yes. they like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Here's another fan favorite, and that is aphids. Uh, uh, yeah, what's your experience with, I'm going to put up just a few little photos of some aphids. <clears throat> uh, they're different right. looking up close, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, this is more the adult and these are the nymph aphids, which I think is a cute little name. And they apparently come in different colors but they have these two little horn things coming out their bottom i guess that's a normal thing now this is something i have seen a lot where they just get infested on the bottom mm -hmm. of the leaf there we go now that one there that one there is what i call a cabbage aphid yes it's a gray one um it's on the brassicas and they are really hard to get rid of oh they are yeah and once they get infested oh my goodness and i was surprised in reading about all this there are like different aphids for different kinds of plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which of, I guess I shouldn't be shocked at that, but <laughs> uh, aphid does not just talk about one bug. It's kind of like a family of yes, it is of little bugs. White fly, black fly, green yes. fly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And this was what they can do to a zucchini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of nasty. Now here's a lovely picture. This is of a ladybug eating them. Cool. So unfortunately, we can't always count on the ladybug being there right when she needs to be. Uh, so anyway, I was asking um, Robin, have you had, uh, do you have problems with aphids? Oh, yeah, definitely. And uh, all all three of them, the red ones, the, the gray ones, and the little white ones. Uh, I... You know, like the last two years, I plant calendula uh, in my actual vet vegetable beds. And mm -hmm. it's like a tra it's the best trap crop. They'll go for the calendula before they'll go for the um, zucchini. Mm -hmm. So actually, I plant it right next to the zucchini. Um, and then, you know, every week or so I'm out there and I just cut the heads with the aphids off of the calendula and, and toss them and new, new flowers come back rapidly and trap it. Um, aphids are, uh, also attracted to my nasturtiums and so love nasturtiums. That's a, yes. yeah. it's another good trap crop. So that's my best way. Other than that, if I have a bad infestation, um, I just spray them off with a garden hose um i'm out there every day anyway so just soapy water is good as well a little bit of yeah. dish soap two drops of dish soap in a sprayer and it, it, it affects their skin and they can't breathe properly so they um you know they pass on to the afterlife you know <laughs> yeah go to aphid, they go to aphid heaven yeah. yes did um, you know did you know that an aphid only mates once a year so it mates, it has its little bit of fun, you know, and it, and it lays its, um, uh, it has a baby, live baby. But the baby also already has the next generation inside it. Yeah. So oh, wow. when you see an aphid, it's, it is actually three generations. It's got its own, it, itself, it's got its baby, and it's got its baby's baby. We've wow. got no chance. We've got no chance. <laughs> yeah. I was very surprised to hear that they were yeah. born essentially pregnant. Yeah. And I thought, wow. And that, that lasts them all year. That one little dose of the uh, the male lasts them all year. And they <laughs> uh, they hibernate or they die off and they do it all again in winter. And here we go again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So have what has been your greatest way to deal with those, um, Steve? I use soapy water or, like okay. um, uh, Robin said, just a hose spray. Or, or we've got another product here. There we are. <clears throat> this is a good one in the UK. Again, you probably can't get it in North America. 
It's called SB Plant Invigorator. And it is basically a, a mild soapy solution with a few little things that kill things in it. But it's also got a, a foliar feed in there as well. Okay. So it, it helps the plant to recover from the uh, damage from the aphids. Yeah. So that's, that's quite a good one. Yeah. And that's one of the other things that I saw as kind of a consistent theme as I was kind of reading about all these insects was that the healthier the plant, the, the cleaner the area, yeah. Uh, the better their chances. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, so to me, it was like, okay, so we really have to raise really strong plants. Mm -hmm. So they have what it takes to kind of uh, battle a little bit. Um, and also planting, like you were talking about, trap crops around them that they're going to... I'm I'm putting up a bug bin this year out in my... I call it the back 40. It's not 40. But it's a big area. Uh, and, and I'm going to plant some brassicas around it and just let them go to seed and make it just a little haven for bugs. And maybe they'll go there and uh, leave my stuff alone. That's my thought anyway. Either that or I'm attracting all the bad bugs um, to, to my garden. Uh, but I'm hoping that they will kind of hang out there instead. But you can attract them with the aim of diverting them from where they're supposed to be going, can't you? That's yeah. what Steve said there. Steve Colwell said there, companion planting, um, polyculture yeah. rules. You know, if you if you if you practice monoculture, rows and rows and rows of cabbages, you're gonna suffer. Yeah. If you've got cabbages interplanted with nasturtiums and calendula and things like that, right. You, you're on you're on a winning streak already, you know? Yeah. Yep. Um, and if you keep it all tidy, right? Yeah. yeah That's yeah. the hard mm -hmm. part. Yeah. It is, yeah. That's the, I have a bit of a problem with that because I do a lot of crop and drop and chop and drop. I do too. Yeah, so I've got a little. I've got quite a bit of uh, debris on top of the compost on top of the soil. Right. And I leave it until it rots down. So for a while, it is a haven for bugs. You know, whatever. Yeah, I think maybe I need to chop smaller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So they're not quite <laughs> as inclined to go find uh, life under there. Okay, let's yeah. let's see what's up next. Oh, our favorite cabbage whites. <laughs> we all love cabbage oh. whites, don't we? <clears throat> the first sign of these little buggers, uh, usually way earlier than we'd like it. I I I feel very sad when I see one of those. And then yep. there's these beautiful little babies that they give to us, and this is what we end up with. So it's just yeah. lovely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what are our thoughts on how to get rid of cabbage whites? My first defense is to pick them off when there's not many of them. Or if I see the yellow eggs, rub them with my thumb just to, right. just to squash them so they can't grow. But you can't do that with every plant, you know. And with every leaf on every plant. It's yeah, like you don't know it. where they've done it. Yeah. 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 And then again, as a grazers product, I use that as I use that. Um, there's not a lot else really. Netting, netting does work, but like I was saying, I don't, I don't like an awful lot of netting. I want to see my plants, you know. Yeah, I will be netting. Don't get me wrong. I'll put some up, but you got to be careful with the netting as well. The um, the one that's made up with all the the woven fibers, you know, they 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 can trap birds. You know, birds get their claws cut, uh, cut their yeah, caught in them. Yeah. Which isn't like much of a problem for me, as I just said. I don't have a lot of small birds on my plot. But um, you know, you're always conscious of it. So if you can, I use a mono monofilament, but okay. Yeah, if I can, always. Uh, so for for me also, it's netting or not. When I was um a young gardener, I would put um just flower, red flower on there, and then the little loopers blow up. You can see them better and pick them off easier. But now I I just have such an incredible infestation and I have both kinds of the loopers. So um, this, is, this is my best thing. This pop-up net. Yes. It, it's metal and it you know it springs it'll spring out um and and it it's good it's got a very tight weave which i have to have i can't have the loose, <clears throat> the loose weave 
And then um, last year, when I did that Sweetabaga challenge, we built a cage and I double netted with kind of um, an EnviroMesh fabric, two layers. Mm -hmm. Nothing got in there. Nothing got in there. That was the that's best. A, that's like a high security prison. <clears throat> it was. You're not it getting really out. Worked. You're not getting in. <laughs> yeah. But those pop-up nets are great. Um, they're four by four and you can get the next size up. So they're a little bit, you know, taller too. Perfect for my raised beds. Um, and they you find me you, about... can, you can seal the bottom when you use those. See, I was worried sometimes about. I have, sometimes I have to put a little extra compost around the, okay. the bottom the just to, okay. to <clears throat> settle it in. Those things, man, those little butterflies, they squeeze into Any the most opening. ridiculously small openings. Um, yeah, and there's nothing Thank worse you. than having netted everything, yeah. and you think everything's fine. And you come back the next day, and there's like five butterflies inside of it. And this is the problem: you use stakes to hold the net down, and next time you use the the net a year's time, the hole from the stake is halfway up, and they get in. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. That doesn't take them. Yeah. There's a quick uh, comment there. There's a quick um, a comment there from uh, from Joe Joe's patch. Um, Bacillus thermogensis. It's um. Yeah. I do. Yeah. It's not approved for use in the UK. It's it. Oh. You, you can spray your brassicas with it. It kills the caterpillars. The reason it's not approved for, sorry, personal use. It's approved for industry use, but not for me. Um, is because there's a thought that some of the um, butterflies, caterpillars, or whatever, are getting immune to it, and it's going to damage the crops. I have used it. I've got some. Don't get me oh. wrong. I use it if I have to. And if I get a bad yeah. invitation, I'll use it. And it does kill them. It, it works. No no qualms whatsoever using it. Yeah, I have used but, that. Um, and for me, it's, it's my last defense. It's a bacteria, right? Just a natural yes, it is. BTK, bacteria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the strain is Kodashi or something like that. Yeah. There's yeah, quite and, a few different strains. You, don't, you can't use the one the, 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 the one with X in it. I can't remember what it's called now. That's the uh, the box tree one. And that, that does harm um, honeybees, apparently. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, when I'm reading on some of that stuff and it says, you know, make sure you spray it first thing in the morning and last, or thing, last thing at night when the bees aren't out. And I think, yeah, ah, we really want mm. those bees, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's, a bit of, uh, there's a bit of a funny one at the moment um, in the UK. Um, I can't remember the chemical now. It's just been approved again to spray sugar beet crops. There's a risk. The UK, 80% of our sugar in the UK comes from our own sugar beet. Mm -hmm. and it's been infested by whatever, so they've approved the use of this stuff. And it is indiscriminate. It kills virtually everything. Yeah. But it's only in areas. The sugar beet fields aren't in, aren't habited by um, honeybees or bees in general. You know what I mean? Okay. So that a lot of people are making a fuss about it, but they don't. the bees don't go there. You know, it's like someone saying, well, there should be a sign-up if this water is too deep to swim in. But you're not a swimmer, you know. What's it matter? It, 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 it's a bit, um, yeah, controversial, really. Mm -hmm. um, and it's only for term, it's only approved for three places in the UK, anyway. The main three sugar beet places, and there's all these strict controls about how often you can spray and what you can grow afterwards, and and can you, you know, there's all these rules. But a lot of people don't read the rules, and they assume, oh, it, you know, it's bad, it's bad, but it's not, it's not. So is it BT that they're using for that? No, it's uh, it's a proper uh, oh, okay. chemical, chemical. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Off track there a bit, so you know. That's... Yeah, <laughs> I I have used the BT, and I just don't like that you have to spray it every time it like it rains. Although in the middle yes, of July, yeah. that's yeah. not an issue because it yeah. never rains. So, <laughs> um, but I got a new netting this year that I am gonna. I wasn't gonna grow any brassicas this year. I've I've fallen and I. I have to. So I bought this new agri fabric. So we'll see. It's more like commercial grade. Okay. So I'm going to see if that, if that works. I, again, I don't like to cover my crops either, but I'd like to get a few. Yeah, I know. I'm sharing yeah. some, but I'd like to get a few of them. There's that old <laughs> saying in there. You, 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 you sow one for you, one for the birds and one for whatever. The trouble is, the pests don't know that that third's theirs. Right. <laughs> Stay over there and let me have mine. But they, they, they just take everything. little nibbles out of all yeah. of them. Going, see, yeah. we're, we're just taking a little bit. We're really not. Yeah. 
we're not really not um, overwhelming you. <laughs> so yeah, we agree that cabbage whites are yeah yeah, yeah. not our favorites. Yeah. No. Okay, <laughs> so let, let's move on to a much more exciting. Um, I got a. I have a picture of this one too. I'll put the picture up before I even say the name, because this will give you nightmares. Okay, come on. After all that, after all the that hornworm, the hornworm, the lovely hornworm. Aren't those just? Imagine meeting that on a dark avenue in the middle of the night, <laughs> and that's when you're supposed to go out and look for them. Is in the middle of the night uh, with yeah. a flashlight. And this is what their moth looks like, which I had not seen before. And um, yeah, they can just do, this is what they do to a tomato plant. Literally, yeah. they could do this in a day. Quickly, yeah. Yeah, really quickly. And here's one who is being, who is now a, a host to another bug and they lay their larva on it. The parasitic wasp. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh my, that's, I don't even think I'd want that for them, but apparently that's what happens. Well, this is, this is why it's good to plant nasturtiums near tomatoes because they attract parasitic wasps. Not nasturtiums. Yes. Um, marigolds. Sorry. Marigolds. Yeah. Marigolds. Marigolds. Yeah, sorry, marigolds. Sorry. marigolds. I was on the, yeah. And they attract the wasps and they attack the hornworms. We don't get many here. I don't, I don't get many. But they're usually big enough to see to pick off anyway. But, um, but like you said, it only takes one missed night and it's devastation. Well, and you're supposed to go out at night yeah. looking for them with a flashlight because that's with when the, they... That's with a black they, light. Yeah. yeah, yeah I was going to say, they, yeah, UV light. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. when they feast. Um, yeah, I've never... Yeah, yeah, Mary goes, I got it right, mate. <laughs> Sorry, his comment is... Yeah. Yeah, I've never uh, come up against one personally. Yeah, uh, but yeah. you have I sense Robin. Oh, you, can yeah. find, you can find slugs with a uh, black light as well because their 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 trails glow. Ah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the tr yes, aren't they? Yeah. It's like it's like uh, a slime trail, yeah, metallic or something. That's it, like, it. It shines a bit. Yeah, yeah, it glitters in the sun. It's <laughs> so so. They're they're those hornworms are like yeah. three inches long. They're yeah. big, and that thing at the front does look like a horn but you know thankfully i must, must have a good it? polyculture because i i get the parasitic wasps yeah. right away yeah. and they go down as soon as you see a horn room with the parasitic wasp it's already done yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and uh, one of the big yeah. things i saw with this because i apparently one of the best ways to deal with these is to pick them off but always wear gloves because apparently these little <laughs> buggers aren't going to know the difference between the leaf it's trying to eat and your finger. <laughs> so uh, just to spare yeah. yourself like a nip from one of these little things. Uh, and, yeah. and the big way to get rid of them apparently is you put them in soapy water and let them drown. Yeah. Yeah. Which I, yeah. Or throw, throw them on the road somewhere. Where is a bird going to eat them? You know? <laughs> yes. And I think they are good food for yeah. bigger birds maybe because they're big. Yeah. Aren't they big? Yeah, they're big. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're big. They're yeah, big. yeah, they surprised me. Yeah. 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 No, you don't have the problem with these, Steve. I've only ever had one or two. You know, okay. I, I grow a lot of tomatoes, as Robin knows. You know, I got. A, <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I've only had one or two, and I've seen them. So I've seen a leaf that's eaten, and I've okay. looked for it, and there it is. So I've never been. I've never had to uh, protect myself against them, if you like. You know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody in the? Um, I want Pauline. I <clears> really do. I don't think I've slept well all week. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This has been going through my brain. Um, okay. So, Horn, if anybody's had any problems or has any advice for how to deal with them that we're not talking about, please, mm. um, please let us know. Okay. Next is a lovely bug that occurs both in the UK and the US by different names, though. It is a stink bug over here, and it is a, uh, what's the beetle? It is a... Mm, Shield beetle? A what beetle? Shield beetle. Yes, sorry, thank you, because it looks like a shield on its back. If you can, excuse me a second, I'll be back in a second. Absolutely. 
so I you have, th- you this was you have a lot of these. I don't I, the um, the shield bug. Um, I have a lot or, of them. Yeah, and but I never knew that they were able to cause damage in my garden. So now I'm going to be more <laughs> mindful of that. Um, well, this is what they can kind of do to a tomato. Well, they're eating it at the moment. Ah. Um, they, and I, they've, I've never seen them do that in my yard, but I have and, plenty of them and they love to come in the house in the fall. And this is kind of what happens. It leaves this shadow. I think they just suck things out of it. A lot of these bugs are more like they just are sucking the life out of the leaves. They're sucking it out of the stems. And in this case, they're sucking it out of the fruit. Um. Yeah, and it's a shield beetle in the UK. I think that's the the names they go by. Uh, Let me see what other... Oh, yeah, they have really weird eggs, too. Wait, wait just a second. All right. I'm sorry, I got really into this. Uh, this is how the, the female will lay the eggs on the back of leaves. So think about that. If she's on the back of a leaf, she's upside down doing this. Right. Yeah. Th- yep. That's I mean, that's what the squash bugs do too. Is you know underneath the leaf. Yeah. yeah. I just think, wow, that's acrobatic at best. And and just like the squash bugs, that it's they're like perfectly formed little rows. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. And so these are the little nymphs coming out, uh, but they hatch. Yeah. And again, all on the back of leaves. That's that to me is quite amazing. For me, the way of the way I um, cure those again is just is by hand picking them off. Yeah, yeah. There's there's not many. I don't get many, but the ones I do, I seem to find. You know, and again, Joe's made a comment there that um, they they like dock leaves. Um, you know, the dock dock yeah the dock weed dock leaves. Our allotment was is built on an old cow pasture. And the, the most prevalent weed was the dock leaf. And so there's still quite a few around. And they tend to go to those rather than go to your, our, our vegetables. Yeah, mm, my, yeah. My, beans, my beans were suffering. My runner beans were suffering more than anything else. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't, um, dig up all the weeds. I leave some to grow because they're natural and the pests go to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I think it's Allie from the right pear plot is saying, I think the ones she's seen are green. And I think there are, yeah. there yeah. are two kinds. Uh, yeah. And the one is the brown kind that really looks like a shield. And the other one is a green one, which I realize I don't have a photo on. It, it is green. It's a shield as well. Yeah. 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 Isn't it capsid bugs? Is that a proper name for them? I can't remember now. Um, yes. Yeah. That's the, I think that's yeah. the, <clears throat> why is this going back and forth? Okay. Because <laughs> Because I'm pressing <laughs> that I shouldn't be. Yeah, we're just trying to see if you're all still awake. Yeah, yeah. The okay. um because the ones you have over there, um, stink bugs they're called, aren't they as well? Right. And yeah. we don't tend to have stink bugs as such. They do smell, but they're not as smelly as your stink bugs. Ours, if you squash ours, they smell of marzipan, or if you touch them, they emit like a marzipan type smell. Okay. Oh. But the stink bugs I've heard of in America, they actually stink, you know. <laughs> no, they, yeah, they stink. Yeah, they stink. Yeah. And they like to come in my house in the fall and you get them. Oh, and no, no, no. You know, no yeah. like, yeah. Well, and apparently they're really known for that. Yeah. Like they want to go and get in somewhere nice and cozy. Like you're going to let them coexist with you. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so they can do, um, and again, they're more the, they suck life out of yes the do. fruits yeah yeah um yeah so we, not about sucking as well we didn't mention with the aphids but one of their uh, byproducts is the the honeydew that comes out their back end yes and that leads to mildew so not only are they bad as sucking the sap yeah. they, their their deposits um encourage mildew it's horrible you know and which, then I, have, which i find it interesting they call it honeydew yeah i know that's well, actually a melon it. over here yeah we have a melon called honeydew. I know honeydew, honeydew melon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but a lot. Another ones have frass. Frass. I guess yeah. that's the name for what 
insect poo. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I use that. There's a, there's a, there's a feed called uh, charge. It is a mealworm uh, poo, basically. Oh. A bucket, bucket of it and uh, chuck that on uh, half a cup per square yard, or whatever it is, and square meter. Yeah. And that's for and nutrition or that's nutrition as well. But it also, um, it makes smaller pests think there's a bigger pest around. Oh. So the ones that mealworms oh. may, you know, may, may not. And also it makes the plant think, oh my word, there's insects around. Let's grow, let's grow better. Let's just ward off the insects, you know. Oh. So it's a natural defense type mechanism. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Clever shit. Dude. <laughs> well, and I, I, again, I felt like there was a special bug for almost every, yeah. uh, every thing we grow. There's like a special bug. So this is the cuke beetle. Oh. Boo, hiss. <laughs> yeah. And one, one comes striped. And one comes polka dot. Oh, yeah, I've had they're... them both. <laughs> yeah, I think their outfits are lovely. Uh, but they can do uh, a lot of damage. Now, Fast. those two look like they're getting busy over there. But <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so this is what they can do to a leaf. Probably in not a whole lot of time. And cucumbers are not the only thing they go after. Here is... I believe a squash or a pumpkin mm. or, or uh, I, I would call that a squash on a pumpkin, but this is the kind of damage they even <clears throat> leave on those. So they're not just limited um, to being with cucumbers, which I didn't like that they get to, you know, go on to other crops as well. Like stick to your own so but last, same family, kind of same family. Last year was my worst year and they did take out my cukes. Luckily, I had harvested enough to pickle as much as I wanted for the year, but we were still enjoying the fresh eating. And honestly, once I really saw the infestation, the plants went down within 10 days. It was fast. Cool. Wow. Now, uh, we do don't you get, get these, them. Steve? We don't have them as, I, I don't have them as a specific pest. Okay. I'm not sure if they are a pest over here as such. Okay. I've not, I've not heard of them myself, you know. Okay. Now, have, what, have you done anything to try to deter those, Robin? So <clears throat> what I noticed last year was the F1s were much more, uh, they lasted longer through the infestation than the heirloom. So I'm going to concentrate on the F1s this mm -hmm. year. And um, my typical squash bug uh, formula, which is um, some cold press neem oil and mm -hmm. some Dr. Bronner's. This is a pure Castile soap that has mm -hmm. a little bit of peppermint in it. Um, about a capful each in uh, a pumper with water. That works good to kill them. Um, I I scraped off the eggs with my thumb, you know, but uh, it was it, they they were fast, mm. much faster than damaged by squash bugs for sure. Okay, and uh, one of the things they're saying is to use trap crops for these. Uh, What's their favorite? Well, that's what I'm looking at here. <laughs> Use a trap crop, but we're not going to tell you which one. <laughs> um, yeah, it doesn't say. Uh, plant a few highly attractive cucurbits. Oh, prior to planting. Oh, they want you to plant one. Like put a, oh, you, right. put a cucumber a out. Decoy, a decoy. A decoy. And then mm. come in and plant your zucchini. So that, oh, that yeah, one's yeah. just being given over to the gods. And good idea. Yeah, good idea. Look, yeah, that might that might yeah. work. And some of the stuff I was reading was uh, be, to plant later after the initial uh, like yeah. insurgence of the bugs. Yeah. yeah. So you're not hitting them right when they're coming yeah. out of the gate, but you're letting them and then bringing in. So plant some yeah. things a little bit later. 
uh, and you might miss the, the biggest attack. Some of the okay. sneaky critters now have two two sessions, don't they? Right. They'll, they'll flush in March, and they'll do it again in uh, September. So you've got to be pretty cute with your timings. Yes. <laughs> now, there was something I was just thinking about the yellow, well, the white butterflies. Gosh, I'll have to. I'll have to. I'll stop. <laughs> I won't think about it. And it'll come to me. Um, okay, so those are. I have not dealt with these, or at least I've never seen them. So if I have dealt with them, uh, but I've not had a plant die like that. So yeah. I don't think I have. I say that now, and I'll watch this year. Now that I've studied all these bugs, I'm going to see every one in my oh, garden. Don't <laughs> I'm gonna see every one of them. I just know it. Yeah. Okay. So next up. Okay, we're gonna. Oh, flea beetles. Now these I get. <laughs> um, and they're just. Oh, we lost. Oh, She'll right. be back. <laughs> she shall return. Something I said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my eyes are so sweating. flea beetles are. Yeah. Uh, just nasty little. Yeah. Every time I plant eggplant. The, yes. the leaves look like the finest lace uh, I've ever had. That's it, I mean, yeah. Look at, and they're all, yeah. <laughs> it's like a medieval attack force. You know? Doesn't it? But look how beautiful <laughs> they lay their eggs. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. like, that's an impressive, that's the, an impressive. The problem with them are, the problem with them, the, the flea beetle is, uh, if you touch the plant, they jump everywhere. And so if you if you haven't got them on a plant, say, you know, two feet away, and you touch the plant, just just check in for caterpillars, and all the flea right. beetles disappear and they infest somewhere else. Like, you know. Well, as long yeah. as they don't infest you while you're doing it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, and um, Lawrence is saying that flea beetles love rocket. Yeah, so turn that might be a great yeah. Uh, little yeah. trap. Yeah. I also read that radish. If, you know those um, yellow sticky sheets that we sticky sometimes traps, use in yeah. the house. Yeah. They're like put those outside where you get flea beetles and they will also adhere to that. They do, yes. I've got them. I use them mainly in the greenhouse for fungus gnats. That, as well I have as them in my office here yeah. for the same reason. Yeah. But I thought, well, that's kind of a non invasive. Yeah. Because they because they hop around so much. The th the problem is again though, it's um it's a catch all kill all, isn't it? So friendly bugs get on there and they die as well. Or Parasitic oh. wasp. Anything will stick to them. That's the problem. Well, so, I was going to try that because I am growing eggplant again this year. But if you've got a real infestation, there's no use it. Use it. You'll kill more flea beetles than you will parasitic wasps. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if you put them out early in the season, you'll kill everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I noticed that my eggplants, even though they're, the leaves were lace, they still produced eggplants. And they didn't seem yeah. to impact. Yeah. Like all the, they're doing is making the, the the size of the leaf smaller, aren't they? So they're reducing the uh, the chlorophyll and all stuff like that. Yeah. But um, they can only stand so much. A plant needs if a leaf oh. is that big, it can only be that big before it stops working. Right. No, they definitely devastate leaves. Yeah. Um, did you get these two, Robin? I I took a little vacation. What are we talking about? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. We're talking. Uh, welcome back. The computer bounced me out. <laughs> oh, you know, we love technology. Um, flea beetles. Flea beetles. Nope. I don't. That's thankfully not on my list. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, lucky. Yeah, they're. Yeah, they're. I well, tell you what, Robin. In, in exchange for your seeds, I'll send you some of my pests over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little matchbox full of beetles and things, and you can have a go at them. Yeah, I would I would do that with uh, flea beetles, too. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. yeah, again, it's only been my eggplant I've noticed them on. So... It's, for me, it's, um, as the comments are saying, it's, it's turnips, radish, the, the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the stranger brassicas, if you like, you know, the, uh, the non-brassica brassicas. <laughs> yeah. Because that plant is surely not Nebraska, but man, it just devastated yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but those also would be good crops, maybe to plant somewhere else that maybe the beetle would go to. Well, this is this is a good thing with radish, isn't it? It's so it grows so quickly. You can plant it where you don't want it, 
Yes. And it will just attract everything that's, you know, it, it, it's going to eat it. So. Which is a wonderful yeah. thing. Yeah, it's one, another one of the uh, uses of companion planting. Yeah, so one of the other controls, obviously, was keep everything clean, uh, net them when they're young, <laughs> and wait till they're bigger, and then they would have more ability to withstand. Yeah. So I think maybe we just need to get, like, one of those golf domes over our entire gardens. Oh. Right? But made out of an agricultural it is that way. fabric. That's the it's getting that way, you know. Yeah, because it seems like everything yeah. else will uh, do just fine. We haven't done um, leaf miner yet. No, it's coming. But, but that only came into the UK in 2002. So it was imported from somewhere in Asia, I think it was, or po uh, Eastern, Eastern European or Asia. Yeah, and it's just spreading from the Midlands outwards. Well, because it probably doesn't have a predator there. Yeah. Yeah. So we came in on something, it came in on a plant supermarket plant or whatever and they just spread and spread and spread and two become four and four became eight and eight become 16 you know what i mean <laughs> doesn't take long yeah, yeah. i just i take... just want to cry when i see that because i love my alliums it would just it would be yeah. so devastating for me yeah well next one up is squash bugs squash don't have those um i have them <laughs> <laughs> but you know the the same combination of the cold pressed neem oil and Dr. Bronner's and a spray, and you know, as soon as I see them get under their under the leaves on top of the leaves, you know, at dusk is usually when I spray, and then about four days later, do it again. Yeah. And I can I can stay on top of the squash bugs, not like the cuke beetles. Well, I find the squash vine borers much more. Um, troublesome. Yeah, that um, I did not have them this past <laughs> year. First year not having them. They hit uh, my zucchini last year pretty bad. Kiss of death it's, there, I think, Robin. <laughs> yes. Well, oh, you know, I've I just um, have muscled through. I take a hat pin and I poke the stem of the um, zucchini all around so you're like poking through the worm somewhere in there or I've actually sliced it kind of done surgery pulled pulled the little nasties out of the stem put it back together and then just kind of earth it up and and the zucchini has lived through it and you know eventually um, produced mm -hmm. on again has anybody ever tried the foil solution I see a lot of people do that where I they wrap it Mm -hmm. Wrap the bottom stem with foil. Has anybody ever tried that? I have not done that. I think I did that years ago. And then I realized, why am I growing zucchini? <laughs> everyone is always trying to get rid of zucchini. So maybe <laughs> I just need to know someone who's growing it. <laughs> but I started, I thought, I wanted, there's a couple new varieties out that I thought <clears> I'd <throat> like to try. And it got nailed last year. And yeah, it says cardboard or tin foil uh but you have to keep it dry so i think tin foil would probably be a better option well if if they work then wouldn't um grease work as well stop grease. things climbing up the stem it could no, be it goes in the stem it goes oh, in the stem. sorry 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 yeah, yeah. it goes I'm sorry. in the stem but it's like the vine bores i've never seen one go up more than maybe i don't know eight eight <sighs> inches have you audrey it's that like eight inches from the soil level up the stem. That's where they like to. Yeah, but then in. they kind of go down and lay their eggs at the root. And that's really <laughs> what the problem is. And the, and they hatch inside the stem. Yeah, the, they're white. Did yeah, you have, have a picture of them? Yeah, let me, I do. I know I have. A... It, the the, the um, bug that lays them is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Um, but um, I have a couple that are out of order. One second. It, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a white worm, if you will, inside the stem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maggot. And, and and when they're attacking it, it just like it looks sort of like vomit coming out of the <laughs> stem. Mm. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I love bugs. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I have a very good friend who's a biologist. And um, has taught uh, for 30 years, like a, a wonderful educator. 
And she always had specimens of various bugs in her home because that's what they do. And I thought, nope, nope. And her husband hates it. He's scared to open anything because of what might be living inside of it. <laughs> scary. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a, I, I do not have a picture of a vine borer. <clears throat> That's okay. No, but nobody's gonna miss it in their dreams. Yeah, tonight. no, they're uh, they do a lot of damage, for sure. They do, and they can go to other. They go to squash too. I mean, oh, that is a squash. Sorry, it's a squash vine borer. Hello. Luckily, uh, you can you can replant a little later in the season and um and get a a fall crop then. Right, and that was one of the big things they were saying is. Don't get your zucchini or your summer squash out too early. Let go in a little later and they'll be fine. So I might try that or try to get in really early. I don't know how your weather's doing, um, Robin, but. Crazy I, mild. I know. I feel like this is not like fall spring. <laughs> I feel like, are we really in spring? We never Seven, have spring here. 70s. You know, yeah. it's like summer. It's yeah. it's like not even not even fall spring. It's like fall summer. Yeah, we're seven <laughs> C here right now, and you know it's only two in the afternoon, and it's we're in March. This is yeah. crazy. Yeah, crazy. Okay, sorry. We don't we have a bit of snow. We've had like had two inches of snow last week, and when it melted, uh, it washed everything away. Well, not me. Uh, other plot uh, plot holders next to me. They lost their wood chip. <laughs> they washed it away. Oh, wow. Yeah. You've had a lot of flooding over there this year, haven't you? We've had rain galore. I mean, there was, there was yeah. a, a report on the BBC News uh, weather, weather Channel saying, we think that February was one of the wettest Februarys ever. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I could have yeah. told you that. You know? I know. <laughs> and we're paying you why? Yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah, yeah. our head out the door yeah. and know that that's happening. pounds to work that out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were quite dry here um, to the point where I was almost going to hook the hose up, which is, you know, worrisome because you got to unhook it then too because we're all set for, you know, freezing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then we got a little rain so we were okay <clears throat> you know i just thought of one that's not on the list um and i usually get them mostly in the fall are the roly-poly bugs the pill bugs pill yeah. bugs they're friendly they're friendly yeah they're friendly, like those. but th <laughs> those little roly-polies in the fall if i try to direct so they they will mm. eat every seedling mm, cool. Really? They're I good in compost heaps, they are, compost bins. Mm -hmm. Wow, I have never had that. Cool, cool. Yeah, I always think they're just so adorable. Yeah, because be you a... touch them and they grow yeah, Exactly, up. they roll yeah, yeah, into yeah, little yeah. balls. Yeah. Um, never, never realized they were actually... We call them wood, wood lice here, we call them wood lice. Yeah, which yeah. has a much nastier name. That's <laughs> like <a> <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm like anything lice. I'm like, oh, that's yeah. that's bad. We got to yeah. get rid of those. Uh, yeah. So um, I've never. So what did you do? To, um, um, I started yeah. my starts um, in cells. Get, let them get a little bit bigger, and then planted them out. But I, I, you know, once I can direct sow, I like to direct. So, sure. you know, it's just easier. And I think the plank idea that you had earlier, Steve, for the slugs would work for wood lice. Because anytime I'm not sure. I move a rock or a piece yeah. of wood around here, there's little roly yeah. bullets. I, I actually, uh, a bit uh, controversial here, but I actually encourage them. <laughs> if I see them, I don't kill them. I like them because they're eating all the dead matter. Maybe they only go to the live stuff when there's nothing dead to eat. I don't, I don't know. So your garden know. is too yeah. tidy, Robin. <laughs> it's it's kind of tidy, yeah. yeah I, I've seen it. It's, it's kind of tidy, yeah. I've definitely seen it. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about leaf miners. Leaf miner? Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't bother. I don't get bothered so much with uh, the common leaf miner. Um, get it on beetroot now and again, and a few of the uh, like radishes again, things like that. But you can see it because there's a white line in the leaf, right? And all you got to do is squash it, and it's, it's dead. You know, I don't treat against it. 
So uh, that's that's that one. The allium miner. I've, we, I've not got the allium leaf miner yet. Touch wood. So. Um, yeah, I don't but, think we're we're even talking about that today. The, leaf the miner. Little, I, I'm missing a few of my photos. Leaf miner. Yeah, you got leaf miner. I, I'm the same way, Steve. I get the leaf miner like in my nasturtiums, particularly. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, geranium leaf. Yeah. And again, the, the nasturtiums are good, a good sacrificial crop to get rid of them. I plant them near my tomatoes and things like that. And uh, the nasturtiums take so many pests away. It's, it, the trouble is, it means you can't eat the nasturtium leaves then. But, <laughs> but they're, very, they're very bitter, don't you find them? No, very peppery. Very, very peppery. peppery. Yeah, very peppery. Yeah. flowers, lovely flowers. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm growing a lot of those this year, but I just wanted them for the, the color. Yeah, uh, try eat. they're lovely to eat. Lovely to eat. Oh, okay. You know, they they I like them as a spiller in my my pots with the other flowers. You know, yeah. Uh, for pretty, for pretty. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're beautiful. Okay, you so get climbing, climbing ones and dwarf ones, all different types. You know. Yeah. So we're not too worried about the leaf miners. I'm not. I got this new one this year. I'm trying. I've used it before in its pure form, and it's um, spinosad. Uh -huh. This is a, this, yeah. this is a, this is American. Yep. But spinosad is one of the few things that will kill the allium leaf miner. Um, and again, I say I, I'm not. I got no qualms about killing that because it's a native invader. It's an alien invader. I don't mind killing that one. Okay. So I'll be trying that this year. I normally. I've not had them, but they're coming this way. You know, they've been reported 20 miles away. Okay. So 20 miles is nothing. A little a little breeze and they're here tomorrow. You know what I mean? Now, I don't want to you... net me alliums because the, the mesh on the alliums, the, to stop that, is two millimeter mesh. It's tiny. It's tiny mesh. I don't want to put that on them. So I'll, I'll give it a spray. If it fails, it fails. And I'll think about meshing next year or stop growing onions. I don't know. Now, where do you get these reports from? That they're twenty miles away. Other 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 gardeners. Okay. Other gardeners. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a nice little um, community that. Yeah. Like you get to know that stuff. Yeah, you go oh, YouTubers, you know, and things like that. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. that's great. Always happy to share information, aren't we? <laughs> that, yeah, yes. that's great. That's I've not used the spinosad, but that's a nice product. It's relatively organic. Um, it's organic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a natural bacteria Mont again. So Monte Monterey, I think, is the Monterey. Yeah, 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 yeah. It costs a fair bit here in the UK because it's not a, it's not a natural product. You know, it's not it's not normally sold in the UK. Amazon only, I think, or yeah. You know. Okay. Honestly, honestly, I ha haven't been in the nurseries too much here uh, because they're not really started up. But I did stop in uh, to a couple here recently, and I swear, like every product is like two to three dollars more. Mm. Oh, there we go. I know. <laughs> That's you know, on an apple. Yep, there you go. <laughs> apple product. Okay. Okay. Um, next one is the white, the vine weevil. That was on your list, Steve. Yeah, a little tiny little thing. It's not the actual beetle that's a problem. It's the larvae in the soil in the compost. Okay. Yeah, and they oh, just no, eat. That's, there's the that's the um. That's the leaf yeah, miner. That's the leaf miner. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry, I did have the photos. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what do they do to your crop? They just lay the uh, the eggs in the soil or in the plant, and the the larvae in the soil, and the the larvae eat the roots. Okay. And they just devastate them. I've had now, whole, it, yeah whole rhubarb disappear. You know. Okay, so is this one of those ones that also there are a couple of them that lay their larva in the dirt under the plant. But that it lives till the next year. I'm not. Yes, it does. Yeah, mine. Yeah. Mine overwintered. Yes, I'm saying mine. They overwintered. Yes. And that yeah. way, you you can't even if you um, net your stuff, it's going to come up inside the net. The thing is, how how do you net a rhubarb? You know, it's huge. You know, yeah. <laughs> they destroyed the rhubarb. Dug it up, and there's always what are they about three quarter of an inch, twenty millimeter long bugs, uh, maggots. Oh. You know, and you you can it's it's hand. In small pots, it's hand picking them, or yeah. you can use as a nematode for it as well as a nematode gets rid of them. Okay, but it's and a I very think... it's a very finite time of using the nematodes. So, 
Yeah, and I think you had said you, the problem with these is when you're they're in pots. Yeah, it's but mostly they, a it's mostly okay. a pot infestation unless okay. you pot that plant into the soil. Okay, and you you take the bugs with it, you know. Yeah. 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 But they're not they're not a great problem. I've only lost a few plants to it, but they're on the list, you know. Well, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um. Absolutely. And I think we have one biggie here at the at the back end. Uh, it's not really a biggie, but it is over here right now. <laughs> at least it's got a lot of drama around it. Let's put it that way. And that's going to be a cicada. I don't get those. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> yeah. So this is when it's in its uh, juvenile form, and then it um, it you'll find these. Uh, shells that they have to get out of to become an adult you need to excuse me again the hydroponics is playing up no problem right and there they are the beautiful adults that we all love to see oh nope that's not what they do sorry they don't do that <laughs> they don't do anything uh so we're uh the midwest is kind of be hit a little hard this year with um, a cicada palooza and it's something that happens I, I you know it only happens every 221 years where mm -hmm. two different kinds of cicadas are coming out uh, and they live underground and then they come out and they're going to be this is going to be a whole lot of them they won't but where there's what they won't do they won't eat any vegetation uh, they don't sting I don't think they have mouths to like hurt anybody uh but they're very prehistoric looking i think startling is going to be the worst thing they're going to actually do particularly if they're in mass like that would be frightening so Just here in illinois here in illinois we've got two broods um that are going to emerge simultaneously uh, like you said for the first time in 200 something years yeah. a 13 year and a 17 year and I'm just a little bit north of kind of the epicenter where both broods are uh, present. So we probably will get that here. Um, <laughs> they don't bite. They're um, mostly just annoying and loud. Um, and do you know the song that they're singing? Is the males trying to attract the females? Isn't they said like it's about the, the about the decibel of a lawnmower. Oh, it's uh, honestly uh, we have so many here in the summer nights. We're out on our deck just trying to you know chill after a weekend or whatever, and you can't talk at some points because it's so loud. I mean, you really you legit cannot talk to each other, and then it's so. I'm wondering if this year, even though we're a bit further from this vortex of cicadas if that's going to impact what we have here um you're uh, you're going to come out a little bit unscathed um now this okay. is going to be like a mirror image of the united states yeah and we're, 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 in the of, mitten. we're the mitten people yeah and audrey's right there yeah and you're and i'm right, right here there. and you can see the two oh, yeah. dudes are just south of me Yep. Um, and, and these two broods are emerging this year, but you're, you're pretty clear. Yeah. I, so, I will not, I will not um, apologize for that. I'm thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a pretty amazing feat of nature, really, isn't it? You, you know, it's, but the they, fact that they live underground for 17 years. Yeah. Yeah. They, they come up they have a purpose the they mate and um the adults will die within uh two months and then the nymphs will hatch in the summer go back in ground and then just keep doing their thing for 13 years 17 years whatever the brood is Amazing. until they emerge again yeah. to complete that life cycle isn't that weird, weird yeah weird. but apparently they're great food for um, larger birds. I mean, mm. that's kind of what 
and I've seen cats with them in their mouths and, <laughs> you know, dogs playing with them because <laughs> they don't know what to do with them. But the cat's like, I'll eat that. Um, yeah, but what an odd sometimes nature just amazes me because i'm like what on earth <laughs> yeah yeah but they can hurt small trees young trees they can um uh, they, they their body can't control temperature so they essentially are sucking the sap out and uh eliminating the sap all at the same time so yeah. there's always this fluid flowing through them uh yeah so so small orchards, small trees. I'm planning to uh, net my two cherries. Yeah, because they're young. They're they're younger. Yeah, um, I'm probably gonna uh, just get all my blueberry netting up early too because they they're woody and could be. And then after <laughs> that, I don't think there's anything too much in jeopardy. Can't yeah, yourself I, I lucky just, on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think they're kind of annoying and and they're just they're very unfortunate looking. So <laughs> you just yeah. kind of like that hornworm. Like you two should get together. <laughs> got, a, got a good face for radio. <laughs> yes, I, I yes, I, I kind of feel that from them. So uh wow. Funny, uh, fun. Bunnies. bunnies, yes, bunnies, bunnies. Oh, you didn't talk bun about oh, bunnies. Right. We still have to talk about bunnies, squirrels, and cats. <laughs> Rabbits. Uh, do you know on the Isle of Portland in Dorset, you can't call them rabbits? Really? Because uh, rabbits were found to be guilty of uh, collapsing the mines and killing loads of locals. And so, you, if you anyone says rabbit, even to this day, if you say rabbit on the Isle of Portland. Um, you, you get frowned upon. You got to call them bunnies, or oh. or long floppy eared things. <laughs> well, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's a fun fact. There we so are. This, this is the kind of um, chicken wire I use because the more uh, open kind, I've seen the little babies squeeze through. Yeah. So um, this is this is the kind I like. Plus. It's, you know, outside being kind of green coated, it doesn't show as much. Yeah. Now, what do you wrap? What do you wrap with that? Um, beans and peas are their buffet favorites. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, they'll eat some other leafy greens and stuff, but, you know, I plant enough that I don't notice it. But, man, they will devastate the beans and peas fast. Okay. <laughs> and have yeah I, yeah I grow mine up in a raised bed that's like 30 inches off the ground so they have not although I did see a bunny up there once which I'm like how did you get up here um, <laughs> but he did uh, but they have not affected uh, that stuff so Ooh. these are these are like little organza bags that yep. um, yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. jewelry comes in and stuff I will fill this with Repelzol um this is a, a you know a u.s product but yeah. it's it's organic um it stinks a little um but you know i will hang this um it also works a little bit for the squirrels to deter them like on the melon bed but i found it helps so uh, you know i found with the squirrels i have to put my squash and uh, any melons or anything that I'm growing in those bags because mm. squirrels don't like their little feet touching the organza, which uh. I think is hilarious. Like, oh, I'm so sorry that a discomfort for you. <laughs> yeah, so I put, as soon as they're uh, pollinated and the melon is started, they go in a bag like that. Yeah, and this I is have, my- Yep. This is my friend, um, uh, the tomatoes. Uh, it's a it's a pretty tight woven yeah. stiff um, fabric. You can get them off Amazon. This is my favorite size um, for yep. multiple purposes. It comes in several different sizes, but this is my favorite size. Yep. No, I those go out as soon as they can. Yeah. They and they if you, and if you wrap them <clears throat> in like tulle, they also don't like that. So when I've grown corn, 
I've just wrapped the stack at the bottom with tool and they haven't climbed up and tried to oh, eat the corn. That's interesting. Yeah, because they just I I'm like their little paws get stuck and they don't like it. So I'm like, okay, cool. We'll get more a, of that. <laughs> I had a squirrel squirrel going up a bird feeder years ago when I used to feed the birds. And I heard Vaseline work. So I, I slammed the whole pole with Vaseline. The darn thing climbed up a little bit, slid down, went lick, 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 climbed up a little bit again. Lick, 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 lick. And honest to God, he was up that pole it's in like 10 that minutes. Is he right. figured it out. Me, lady. Smart. <clears throat> yeah. Well, did we have any other uh, questions? Well, you, about I got one on cats. I got one about cats. Now be very careful here, um, Steve. No, 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 no. Don't <laughs> no, hurt. Don't hurt. I'm saying I'm a oh. very dear cat lover, and my cat is actually just two feet from me, so he's going to hear that. Right. Oh, mine. <laughs> no. Before I had my raised beds in the front garden, I got a little bit of um, only about two meters by a meter patch of soil that I was growing things in, and I was getting trouble by cats because nobody else on my estate, little estate, thirty houses. Nobody else has got a front garden as such. There's nowhere for the cats to go. And I was getting fed up with it. So I've been look, I was looking around. And to deter them, you could fill a, a soda bottle full of water, lie it down. The cat sees it, runs away because it thinks there's a bigger cat there. That works for about a week. You can put pepper dust down. The cat goes, a chew, a chew, and that works for about a week. And you could put citrus and whatever. Now, there's this one plant I bought. I went to a garden centre. I bought this plant called, which way up is it? That way up. Coleus catena, or something like that. Oh, okay. -na -na. Coleus? It's called scaredy cat. Cats hate it. So oh. I bought two of these, and I planted them nice and neatly in my little bed amongst all the vegetables. And I even put the, 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 the label that came with the plant next to each of them. Next morning, I thought, let's go and have a look. And there it was. There's the label. And there's the cat's business over the top of the label. <laughs> the cat <laughs> thought, oh, yeah, I'm having my... <laughs> yeah. so, but luckily now, there's a few more people who got a bit of green stuff out the front of their house, so the cats go there. You know. but, <laughs> I'll tell okay, you what, it, was, is... it was the cat saying, dig well, that's it, we're having you. Oh, right. yeah, you know, he's, yeah, they, yeah, they let you know who's yeah. in charge. My thing with cats, everything works. But not for very long. Lion poo works. If you can get lion poo, it works. Put a bit of lion poo down. They think there's a bigger cat around. They won't touch you no, for a week. You Once you realize there's no big cat around, they'll go. Then you put your water bottle back. Then you put your pepper back. Then you, you know, it's it's all it's a it's a game with cats. And my first question is, where on earth do you get lion poo? They actually sell it in our garden centers, believe it or not, from the zoo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. It's actually well, cool. It's actually marketed as Lion's Roar, I think it is, is the name of the, the brand. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and don't get it wet because it stinks. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. not very um yeah. broken down. I think so the only I, exotic thing I've seen for sale is coyote urine in our garden centers. Ridiculous. You're you're taking the Pink now, aren't you? <laughs> we, we, bought, we, bought, we bought fox urine one year. Yeah. I think okay. keep rabbits off our garden. Yeah, that, that's it. Yeah. They, it's they like, how does a rabbit who doesn't even know what a fox is know what their urine might smell? That's right. Like? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I thought, well, there's no logic yeah. in this. Like, they're not, they're not going to stay away from something. They don't know what it is. Yeah. Anyway, to, so I think, um, wow, we've gone well over an hour. Gosh, thank you so much. That went fast. That like went lightning. Fast. Yes. So, I just see what, so, sorry, just a quick one. What Rob's allotment gardens put up there? Oh, Rob, how are you doing, mate? Um, he's put a product there called Critter Ridder. I'm sure I've used that. And it stinks and it, it gets rid of everything. Or, sorry, deters everything. So, okay. for cat, cats and things like that. So, yeah, well, I, I couldn't remember the name, Rob. So, thanks for that. I'll, I'll look for that one again. Yeah. Critter Ridder. I wonder if it works on squirrels. Well, yeah, I think it works on um, foxes as well. 
Okay. If it's the one I'm thinking of. If it's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. And I need well. to say, I wish foxes were an issue over here. Because they're, they're so not with me. They, they're the only thing that fox has done with me, they bang, they played trampoline on my netting before now. I've actually oh. got um, a trail cam footage of them bouncing up and down on the netting, you know. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I just wish they'd catch some of the mice and things or whatever. You know? Well, they're yeah. probably almost, they're not domesticated, obviously, but they're used to humans. and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're getting they're, more so, yeah. 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 Um, okay. Ooh. Well, gosh, Steve and Robin, thank you so <laughs> very much. Oh. This is a great combo. And I have a lot of... I'm going to go investigate this year. That's going to be my goal. I'm looking for bugs this year uh, to see what I can identify. Now that I can't sleep at night, I'm going to have to um, use it as a learning opportunity. Uh, so thank you all for being here and for sharing some of your info in the chat. I always go back and read every comment in the chat and pick up some really good information because yeah. I know you're all gardeners. I'll leave a few yeah. comments in there as well. I usually do. So. Yeah. So again, thank you so much. I know it's the middle of your day or the middle of your evening. Uh, and we will see you next time, uh, next week. Same time, same place. Thanks so much. Cheers, guys. Bye now. <laughs> Bye. Bye.